Old Norse was a North Germanic language that was spoken by inhabitants of Scandinavia and inhabitants of their overseas settlements from about the 9th to the 13th century. The Proto-Norse language developed into Old Norse by the 8th century, and Old Norse began to develop into the modern North Germanic languages in the mid to late 14th century, ending the language phase known as Old Norse. These dates, however, are not absolute, since written Old Norse is found well into the 15th century. Old Norse was divided into three dialects Old West Norse, Old East Norse, and Old Gutnish. Old West and East Norse formed a dialect continuum, with no clear geographical boundary between them. For example, Old East Norse traits were found in eastern Norway, although Old Norwegian is classified as Old West Norse, and Old West Norse traits were found in western Sweden. Most speakers spoke Old East Norse in what is present-day Denmark and Sweden. Old Gutnish, the more obscure dialectal branch, is sometimes included in the Old East Norse dialect due to geographical associations. It developed its own unique features and shared in changes to both other branches. The 12th-century Icelandic Grey Goose laws state that Swedes, Norwegians, Icelanders, and Danes spoke the same language, Dansk Tunga, Danish tongue. Speakers of Old East Norse would have said Dansk Tunga. Another term, used especially commonly with reference to West Norse, was Noroant Mal or Norunt Mal. Nordic, Northern speech. Today Old Norse has developed into the modern North Germanic languages Icelandic, Faroese, Norwegian, Danish, and Swedish, of which Norwegian, Danish and Swedish retain considerable mutual intelligibility. Topic. Geographical distribution. Old Icelandic was very close to Old Norwegian, and together they formed the Old West Norse dialect, which was also spoken in settlements in Ireland, Scotland, the Isle of Man and northwest England, and in Norse settlements in Normandy. The Old East Norse dialect was spoken in Denmark, Sweden, settlements in Kievan Rus, eastern England, and Danish settlements in Normandy. The Old Gutnish dialect was spoken in Gotland and in various settlements in the east. In the 11th century, Old Norse was the most widely spoken European language, ranging from Vinland in the west to the Volga River in the east. In Kievan Rus, it survived the longest in Veliki Novgorod, probably lasting into the 13th century there. The age of the Swedish-speaking population of Finland is strongly contested, but at latest by the time of the Second Swedish Crusade in the 13th century, Swedish settlement had spread the language into the region. Modern descendants The modern descendants of the Old West Norse dialect are the West Scandinavian languages of Icelandic, Faroese, Norwegian, and the extinct Norn language of Orkney and Shetland. The descendants of the Old East Norse dialect are the East Scandinavian languages of Danish and Swedish. Norwegian is descended from Old West Norse, but over the centuries it has been heavily influenced by East Norse, particularly during the Denmark Norway Union. Among these, Icelandic and the closely related Faroese have changed the least from Old Norse in the last thousand years, although with Danish rule of the Faroe Islands, Faroese has also been influenced by Danish. Old Norse also had an influence on English dialects and Lowland Scots, which contain many Old Norse loanwords. It also influenced the development of the Norman language, and through it and to a smaller extent, that of modern French. Of the modern languages, Icelandic is the closest to Old Norse. Written modern Icelandic derives from the Old Norse phonemic writing system. Contemporary Icelandic speakers can read Old Norse, which varies slightly in spelling as well as semantics and word order. However, pronunciation, particularly of the vowel phonemes, has changed at least as much as in the other North Germanic languages. Faroese retains many similarities but is influenced by Danish, Norwegian, and Gaelic Scottish and or Irish. Although Swedish, Danish and the Norwegian languages have diverged the most, they still retain mutual intelligibility. Speakers of modern Swedish, Norwegian and Danish can mostly understand each other without studying their neighboring languages, particularly if speaking slowly. The languages are also sufficiently similar in writing that they can mostly be understood across borders. This could be because these languages have been mutually affected by each other, as well as having a similar development influenced by Middle Low German. Topic. Other influenced languages Various other languages, which are not closely related, have been heavily influenced by Norse, particularly the Norman language. 
Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian, Lithuanian, Finnish, Latvian, and Estonian also have a number of Norse loanwords. The words Rus and Russia, according to one theory, may be named after the Rus people, a Norse tribe. See Rus name, probably from present day East Central Sweden. The current Finnish and Estonian words for Sweden are Ruotsi and Rutsi, respectively. A number of loanwords have been introduced into the Irish language, many but not all are associated with fishing and sailing. A similar influence is found in Scots Gaelic, with over 100 loanwords estimated to be in the language, many of which, but not all, are related to fishing and sailing. Phonology Vowels The vowel phonemes mostly come in pairs of long and short. The standardized orthography marks the long vowels with an acute accent. In medieval manuscripts, it is often unmarked but sometimes marked with an accent or through gemination. All phonemes have, more or less, the expected phonetic realization. Old Norse has had nasalized versions of all nine vowel places. These occurred as allophones of the vowels before nasal consonants and in places where a nasal had followed it in an older form of the word, before it was absorbed into a neighboring sound. If the nasal was absorbed by a stressed vowel, it would also lengthen the vowel. These nasalizations also occurred in the other Germanic languages, but were not retained long. They were noted in the first grammatical treatise, and otherwise might have remained unknown. The first grammarian marked these with a dot above the letter. This notation did not catch on, and would soon be obsolete. Nasal and oral vowels probably merged around the 11th century in most of Old East Norse. However, the distinction still holds in Dalekarlian dialects. The dots in the following vowel table separate the oral from nasal phonemes. Note, the open or open mid-vowels may be transcribed differently. A equals 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 a sometime around the 13th century, spelled o merged with o, or o, in all dialects except Old Danish. In Icelandic, all o merged with o. This can be determined by their distinction within the 12th century first grammatical treatise but not within the early 13th century prose Edda. The nasal vowels, also noted in the first grammatical treatise, are assumed to have been lost in most dialects by this time, but notably they are retained in Elfdalian. See Old Icelandic for the mergers of o stroke, spelled o with, spelled a, and spelled e with, e, e. Topic. Consonants. Old Norse has six plosive phonemes, p, being rare word initially and, d, and, b, pronounced as voiced fricative allophones between vowels except in compound words e.g. verabati, already in the Proto-Germanic language e.g. asterisk b asterisk beta greater than v between vowels. The phoneme was pronounced as after an n or another g and as k before s and t. Some accounts have it a voiced velar fricative. In all cases, and others have that realization only in the middle of words and between vowels, with it otherwise being realized. The Old East Norse was an apical consonant, with its precise position as unknown, it is reconstructed as a palatal sibilant. It descended from Proto Germanic, z, and eventually developed into r, as had already occurred in Old West Norse. The consonant digraphs hl, our, hn occurred word initially. It is unclear whether they were sequences of two consonants with the first element realized as h, or perhaps x, or as single voiceless sonorants l, r, and n, respectively. In Old Norwegian, Old Danish and later Old Swedish, the groups hl, our, hn were reduced to plain l, r, n, which suggests that they had most likely already been pronounced as voiceless sonorants by Old Norse times. The pronunciation of HV is unclear, but it may have been X, the Proto Germanic pronunciation, H, or. Unlike the three other digrigs, it was retained much longer in all dialects. Without ever developing into a voiceless sonorant in Icelandic, it instead underwent fortition to a plosive, KV, which suggests that instead of being a voiceless sonorant, it retained a stronger frication. Orthography <inaudible> <inaudible> Unlike Proto-Norse, which was written with the Elder Futhark, Runic Old Norse was originally written with the Younger Futhark, which only had 16 letters. Because of the limited number of runes, several runes were used for different sounds, and the distinction between long and short vowels wasn't retained in writing. Medieval runes came into use some time later. 
As for the Latin alphabet, there was no standardized orthography in use in the Middle Ages. A modified version of the letter when called vend was used briefly for the sounds, u, v, and, with. Long vowels were sometimes marked with acutes, but also sometimes left unmarked or geminated. The standardized Old Norse spelling was created in the 19th century, and is for the most part phonemic. The most notable deviation is that the non-phonemic difference between the voiced and the voiceless dental fricative is marked. The oldest texts as well as runic inscriptions use, exclusively. Long vowels are denoted with acutes. Most other letters are written with the same glyph as the IPA phoneme, except as shown in the table below. Topic. Accent Primary stress in Old Norse falls on the word stem, so that hyriar would be pronounced slash hyr.jar. In compound words, secondary stress falls on the second stem e.g. larisvin, l, i swin. Topic. Phonological processes Topic. Oblaut Oblaut patterns are groups of vowels which are swapped, or ablauted, in the nucleus of a word. Strong verbs oblaut the lemma's nucleus to derive the past forms of the verb. This parallels English conjugation, where, e.g., the nucleus of sing becomes sang in the past tense and sung in the past participle. Some verbs are derived by oblaut, as the present in past verbs do by consequence of being derived from the past tense forms of strong verbs. Umlaut Umlaut or mutation is an assimilatory process acting on vowels preceding a vowel or semivowel of a different vowel backness. In the case of i umlaut and umlaut, this entails a fronting of back vowels, with retention of lip rounding. In the case of u umlaut, this entails labialization of unrounded vowels. Umlaut is phonemic and in many situations grammatically significant as a side effect of losing the Proto-Germanic morphological suffixes whose vowels created the umlaut allophones. Some, y, y, o, o stroke, oi, and all, i, were obtained by i umlaut from, u, u, o, o, a, a, o, and, i, respectively. Others were formed via umlaut from u, u, a, a, and o, some y, y, o, o stroke, and all were obtained by u umlaut from i, i, e, e, and a, a, respectively. See Old Icelandic for information on o, was obtained through a simultaneous u and i umlaut of a. It appears in words like gora, gyora, gera, from Proto Germanic asterisk garwajana, and commonly in verbs with a velar consonant before the suffix like sakva, glass, hair, pile of rocks. Topic U umlaut U umlaut is more common in Old West Norse in both phonemic and allophonic positions, while it only occurs sparsely in post runic Old East Norse and even in runic Old East Norse. Compare West Old Norse for accusative of fair, father, vor, guardian, caretaker, orn, eagle, jor, earth, modern Icelandic, jor, molk, milk, modern Icelandic, molk with Old Swedish for, verer, orn, jor and modern Swedish orn, jord, molk with the latter two demonstrating the u-umlaut found in Swedish, this is still a major difference between Swedish and Faroese and Icelandic today. Plurals of neuters do not have u umlaut at all in Swedish, but in Faroese and Icelandic they do, for example the Faroese and Icelandic plurals of the word land, land and land respectively, in contrast to the Swedish plural land and numerous other examples. That also applies to almost all feminine nouns, for example the largest feminine noun group, the o stem nouns except the Swedish noun jord mentioned above, and even i stem nouns and root nouns, such as Old West Norse mork, mork in, Icelandic, in comparison with modern and Old Swedish mark. Topic breaking Vowel breaking, or fracture, caused a front vowel to be split into a semivowel vowel sequence before a back vowel in the following syllable. While West Norse only broke e, East Norse also broke i. The change was blocked by a v, l, or r preceding the potentially broken vowel. Some ya or j and ya or j result from breaking of e and e respectively. Topic assimilation or elision of inflectional when a noun, pronoun, adjective or verb has a long vowel or diphthong in the accented syllable and its stem ends in a single l, n or s, the r or the elder r or z variant in an ending is assimilated. When the accented vowel is short, the ending is dropped. The nominative of the strong masculine declension and some i-stem feminine nouns uses one such r, oin r oin, becomes oin instead of asterisk oin r asterisk oin. 
The verb blaza to blow has third person present tense blaze for he blows rather than asterisk blazer asterisk blaze. Similarly, the verb skina to shine had present tense third person skin rather than asterisk skinar asterisk skin, while kala to cool down had present tense third person kel rather than asterisk kelr asterisk kel. The rule is not absolute, with certain counter-examples such as vinr, which has the synonym vin, yet retains the unabsorbed version, and jotun, where assimilation takes place even though the root vowel, o, is short. The clusters asterisk, cl, cs, cn, cr, cannot yield asterisk, cl, cs, cn, cr, respectively, instead, cl, cs, cn, cr. The effect of this shortening can result in the lack of distinction between some forms of the noun. In the case of VETR, the nominative and accusative singular and plural forms are identical. The nominative singular and nominative and accusative plural would otherwise have been own asterisk vetar, oen asterisk vinter. These forms are impossible because the cluster asterisk, cr, cannot be realized as, cr, nor as asterisk, cr, nor as asterisk, c. The same shortening as in VETR also occurs in lax equals lax as opposed to asterisk lax, asterisk lax, BOTN as opposed to asterisk button, asterisk button, and JARL as opposed to asterisk JARL, asterisk JARL. Furthermore, wherever the cluster asterisk R is expected to exist, such as in the male names Ragnar, Steinar, supposedly asterisk Ragnar, asterisk Steiner, the result is apparently always R rather than asterisk R or asterisk. This is observable in the runic corpus. Topic: Phonotactics. Topic: Blocking of e, u, u. I, j adjacent to I, e, their u umlauts, and a was not possible, nor u, v adjacent to u, o, their i umlauts, and o. At the beginning of words, this manifested as a dropping of the initial j or v. Compare on or, all for, are with English word, wolf, year. In inflections, this manifested as the dropping of the inflectional vowels. Thus, clay plus dat i remains clay, and Xiaom in Icelandic progressed to sj um greater than sjm greater than sham. The jj and ww of Proto Germanic became ggj and ggv respectively in Old Norse, a change known as Holtzmann's Law. Apenthesis An epenthetic vowel became popular by 1200 in Old Danish, 1250 in Old Swedish and Norwegian, and 1300 in Old Icelandic. An unstressed vowel was used which varied by dialect. Old Norwegian exhibited all three, U, was used in West Norwegian south of Bergen, as in aftor, after older aptr, north of Bergen, I, appeared in after, after, and East Norwegian used, a, after, after. Topic. Grammar Old Norse was a moderately inflected language with high levels of nominal and verbal inflection. Most of the fused morphemes are retained in modern Icelandic, especially in regard to noun case declensions, whereas modern Norwegian in comparison has moved towards more analytical word structures. Topic. Gender Old Norse had three grammatical genders, masculine, feminine and neuter. Adjectives or pronouns referring to a noun must mirror the gender of that noun, so that one says, Heil mar, but, Heilt barn. As in other languages, the grammatical gender of an impersonal noun is generally unrelated to an expected natural gender of that noun. While indeed Karl, man, is masculine, Kona, woman is feminine, and hus, house, is neuter, so also are hrafn and kraka, for raven, and crow, masculine and feminine respectively, even in reference to a female raven or a male crow. All neuter words have identical nominative and accusative forms, and all feminine words have identical nominative and accusative plurals. The gender of some words plurals does not agree with that of their singulars, such as lim and mund. Some words, such as hunger, have multiple genders, evidenced by their determiners being declined in different genders within a given sentence. Topic. Hierarchy Old Norse inherited the Proto-Germanic feature of having neuter as the default gender. 
This means that when the gender of a noun is unknown, adjectives and pronouns referencing it use the neuter gender forms, rather than the masculine or feminine. Thus, if speaking or writing to a general audience, one would say welcome it, well as it come, rather than welcome or welcome well as, he or she, come, as one does not know whether the person hearing it is going to be male or female. One generally sees adjectives in their neuter form when used pronominally for this reason. For words more commonly used in this way, rather than to describe a noun, one sees their neuter forms more often than their masculine or feminine. Normally the masculine form would be the most beneficial form of an adjective to learn first, given that the majority of nouns are masculine. In these cases, however, the most practical form to learn first would be the neuter. Topic. Morphology Nouns, adjectives and pronouns were declined in four grammatical cases. Nominative, accusative, genitive and dative, in singular and plural numbers. Adjectives and pronouns were additionally declined in three grammatical genders. Some pronouns first and second person could have dual number in addition to singular and plural. The genitive is used partitively, and quite often in compounds and kennings e.g., Ererbrunar, the well of Ur, Lokasena, the jibing of Loki. There were several classes of nouns within each gender, the following is an example of the strong inflectional paradigms. In addition to these examples there were the numerous weak noun paradigms, which had a much higher degree of syncretism between the different cases in its paradigms, i.e. they had fewer forms than the strong nouns. A definite article was realized as a suffix, that retained an independent declension e.g. troll a troll trollet the troll, hall a hall hallin the hall, armr an arm armorin the arm. This definite article, however, was a separate word, and did not become attached to the noun before later stages of the Old Norse period. Topic. Texts The earliest inscriptions in Old Norse are runic, from the 8th century. Runes continued to be commonly used until the 15th century and have been recorded to be in use in some form as late as the 19th century in some parts of Sweden. With the conversion to Christianity in the 11th century came the Latin alphabet. The oldest preserved texts in Old Norse in the Latin alphabet date from the middle of the 12th century. Subsequently, Old Norse became the vehicle of a large and varied body of vernacular literature, unique in medieval Europe. Most of the surviving literature was written in Iceland. Best known are the Norse sagas, the Icelanders' sagas and the mythological literature, but there also survives a large body of religious literature, translations into Old Norse of courtly romances, classical mythology, and the Old Testament, as well as instructional material, grammatical treatises and a large body of letters and official documents. Topic. Dialects Most of the innovations that appeared in Old Norse spread evenly through the Old Norse area. As a result, the dialects were very similar and considered to be the same language, a language that they sometimes called the Danish tongue sometimes Norse language as evidenced in the following two quotes from Heimskeringla by Snorri Sturluson. However, some changes were geographically limited and so created a dialectal difference between Old West Norse and Old East Norse. As Proto-Norse evolved into Old Norse, in the 8th century, the effects of the umlauts seem to have been very much the same over the whole Old Norse area. But in later dialects of the language a split occurred mainly between West and East as the use of umlauts began to vary. The typical umlauts for example phila from asterisk fulogen were better preserved in the west due to later generalizations in the east where many instances of umlaut were removed many archaic eastern texts as well as eastern runic inscriptions however portray the same extent of umlauts as in later western Old Norse. All the while, the changes resulting in breaking for example hiarda from asterisk herda were more influential in the east probably once again due to generalizations within the inflectional system. This difference was one of the greatest reasons behind the dialectalization that took place in the 9th and 10th centuries, shaping an Old West Norse dialect in Norway and the Atlantic settlements and an Old East Norse dialect in Denmark and Sweden. Old West Norse and Old Gutnish did not take part in the monophthongization which changed i a into e, oi a and o into o stroke, nor did certain peripheral dialects of Swedish, as seen in modern Austrobothnian dialects. Another difference was that Old West Norse lost certain combinations of consonants. 
The combinations MP, NT, and NK were assimilated into PP, TT and KK in Old West Norse, but this phenomenon was limited in Old East Norse. Here is a comparison between the two dialects as well as Old Gutnish. It is a transcription from one of the Funbo runestones U990, meaning, Ver and Thane and Gunnar raised this stone after Haarsi, their father. God help his spirit. The OEN original text above is transliterated according to traditional scholarly methods, wherein U umlaut is not regarded in runic Old East Norse. Modern studies have shown that the positions where it applies are the same as for runic Old West Norse. An alternative and probably more accurate transliteration would therefore render the text in OEN as such. Some past participles and other words underwent I umlaut in Old West Norse but not in Old East Norse dialects. Examples of that are Icelandic slegi, slegin and teki, tekin, which in Swedish are slagit, slagin and tagit, tagin. This can also be seen in the Icelandic and Norwegian words sterker and stirk, strong, which in Swedish is stark as in Old Swedish. These differences can also be seen in comparison between Norwegian and Swedish. Topic. Old West Norse The combinations MP, NT, and NK mostly merged to PP, TT and KK in Old West Norse at around the 7th century, marking the first distinction between the Eastern and Western dialects. The following table illustrates this. An early difference between Old West Norse and the other dialects was that Old West Norse had the forms boo, dwelling, ku, cow, accusative, and true, faith, whereas Old East Norse had bo, ko, and tro. Old West Norse was also characterized by the preservation of u umlaut, which meant that, for example, Proto Norse asterisk tanu, tooth was pronounced tun and not tan as in post-runic Old East Norse, own gs and runic oen gs, while post-runic oen gas, goose. The earliest body of text appears in runic inscriptions and in poems composed c. 900 by Julfer of Havinir although the poems are not preserved in contemporary sources, but only in much later manuscripts. The earliest manuscripts are from the period 1150–1200 and concern both legal, religious and historical matters. During the 12th and 13th centuries, Trondelag and Western Norway were the most important areas of the Norwegian kingdom and they shaped Old West Norse as an archaic language with a rich set of declensions. In the body of text that has come down to us from until c. 1300, Old West Norse had little dialect variation, and Old Icelandic does not diverge much more than the Old Norwegian dialects do from each other. Old Norwegian differentiated early from Old Icelandic by the loss of the consonant H in initial position before L, N and R, thus whereas Old Icelandic manuscripts might use the form H nefi, fist, Old Norwegian manuscripts might use nefi. From the late 13th century, Old Icelandic and Old Norwegian started to diverge more. After c. 1350, the Black Death and following social upheavals seem to have accelerated language changes in Norway. From the late 14th century, the language used in Norway is generally referred to as Middle Norwegian. Old West Norse underwent a lengthening of initial vowels at some point, especially in Norwegian, so that on Ada became Ada, O N W A K R greater than Akr, O I C ek greater than Ek. Topic: <laughs> Old Icelandic. In Iceland, initial with before was lost. Compare Icelandic Ranger with Norwegian Vranger, O E N Vrang. This change is shared with Old Gutnish, a specifically Icelandic sound, the long, u umlauted a, spelled and pronounced, developed circa the early 11th century. It was short lived, being marked in the grammatical treatises and remaining until the end of the 12th century, with merged with v during the 12th century. This caused v to become an independent phoneme from f, and the written distinction of v for v from medial and final f to become merely etymological. Around the 13th century, O, O, O stroke, merged to A. Thus, pre-13th century grown green became modern Icelandic grain. The 12th century Grey Goose Laws manuscripts distinguish the vowels, and so the Codex Regius copy does as well. However, the 13th century Codex Regius copy of the Poetic Edda probably relied on newer and or poorer quality sources. 
demonstrating either difficulty with or total lack of natural distinction. The manuscripts show separation of the two phonemes in some places, but frequently mix up the letters chosen to distinguish them in others. Towards the end of the 13th century, e merged to e e. Topic: <laughs> Old Norwegian. Around the 11th century, Old Norwegian HL, HN, and our became L, N, and R. It is debatable whether the HC sequences represented a consonant cluster, per hectocoulomb, or a devoicing, c. Orthographic evidence suggests that, in a confined dialect of Old Norwegian, may have been unrounded before, u, so that u umlaut was reversed where the u had not been eliminated. e.g. ol, alum greater than ol, alum. Topic. Greenlandic Norse This dialect of Old West Norse was spoken by Icelandic colonies in Greenland. When the colonies died out around the 15th century, the dialect went with it. The phoneme, theta, and some, merged to, t, so that Old Icelandic or becomes tortor. Topic. Text example the following text is from Alexander's Saga, an Alexander romance. The manuscript, AM 519 of 42, is dated c. 1280. The facsimile demonstrates the sigla used by scribes to write Old Norse. Many of these were borrowed from Latin. Without familiarity with these abbreviations, the facsimile will be unreadable to many. In addition, reading the manuscript itself requires familiarity with the letterforms of the native script. The abbreviations are expanded in a version with normalized spelling like the standard normalization systems. Comparing this to the spelling of the same text in modern Icelandic shows that, while pronunciation has changed greatly, spelling has changed little. Asterisk a printed in Unschel. Unschel's not encoded separately in Unicode as of this section's writing. Topic. Old East Norse Old East Norse, between 800 and 1100, is called runic Swedish in Sweden and runic Danish in Denmark, but for geographical not linguistic reasons. Any differences between the two were minute at best during the more ancient stages of this dialect group. Changes had a tendency to occur earlier in the Danish region. Even today many Old Danish changes have still not taken place in modern Swedish. Swedish is therefore the more archaic of the two in both the ancient and the modern languages, sometimes by a profound margin but in general, differences are still minute. The language is called runic because the body of text appears in runes. Runic Old East Norse is characteristically archaic in form, especially Swedish which is still true for modern Swedish compared to Danish. In essence it matches or surpasses the archaicness of post-runic Old West Norse which in its turn is generally more archaic than post-runic Old East Norse. While typically Eastern in structure, many later post-runic changes and trademarks of OEN had yet to happen. The phoneme, which evolved during the Proto-Norse period from Z, was still clearly separated from R in most positions, even when being geminated, while in own it had already merged with R. Monophthongization of AI greater than E and OI, O greater than O stroke started in mid 10th century Denmark. Compare runic OEN, FAIG, GAI, HAUG, MOIDEM, DIO, with post runic OEN, FEGER, GIER, HO stroke GER, MO stroke DAMER, DIER, ON, FEG R, GEIER, HAGER, MADEMER, DIER, from PN asterisk FEGIAS, asterisk GEISES, asterisk HAGES, asterisk MAWI plus DOMAS, MADENDEM, VIRGINITY, asterisk DIUSA, WILD, ANIMAL. Feminine O stems often preserve the plural ending A while in own they more often merge with the feminine I stems, runic OEN asterisk sola, asterisk hafna, asterisk hamna, asterisk vega while own solier, hafnir and vigur modern Swedish solar, hamner, vagar, sons, havens, scales. Danish has mainly lost the distinction between the two stems with both endings now being rendered as er or e alternatively for the O stems. Vice versa, masculine I stems with the root ending in either G or K tended to shift the plural ending to that of the YA stems while OEN kept the original, Drainhia, asterisk Elja and asterisk Bankia while own Drengir, Elgir, Elks and Bekir modern Danish Drenge, Elge, Banki, modern Swedish Dranger, Alger, Banker. 
The plural ending of ya stems were mostly preserved while those of oen often acquired that of the i stems, asterisk beya, asterisk bekia, asterisk vafia while own beer beds, bekir, vafir modern Swedish badar, bakar, vavar. Topic. Old Danish Until the early 12th century, Old East Norse was very much a uniform dialect. It was in Denmark that the first innovations appeared that would differentiate Old Danish from Old Swedish Bandel 2005, Old East Nordic, pp. 1856, 1859 as these innovations spread north unevenly unlike the earlier changes that spread more evenly over the East Norse area creating a series of isoglosses going from Zealand to Svealand. In Old Danish, H, merged with, during the 9th century. From the 11th to 14th centuries, the unstressed vowels a, o and e standard normalization a, u and i started to merge into represented with the letter e. This vowel came to be epithetic, particularly before endings. At the same time, the voiceless stop consonants p, t and k became voiced plosives and even fricative consonants. Resulting from these innovations, Danish has cage cake, tunger tongues, and gaster guests, whereas standard Swedish has retained older forms, kaka, tunger and gaster oen kaka, tungur, gaster. Moreover, the Danish pitch accent shared with Norwegian and Swedish changed into stad around this time. Topic. Old Swedish at the end of the 10th and early 11th century initial H before L, N and R was still preserved in the middle and northern parts of Sweden, and is sporadically still preserved in some northern dialects as G, e.g. Gly lukewarm, from Hali. The Dalekarlian dialects developed independently from Old Swedish and as such can be considered separate languages from Swedish. Topic. Text example This is an extract from Vastgalagen, the Westergothic law. It is the oldest text written as a manuscript found in Sweden and from the 13th century. It is contemporaneous with most of the Icelandic literature. The text marks the beginning of Old Swedish as a distinct dialect. Topic. Old Gutnish Due to Gotland's early isolation from the mainland, many features of Old Norse did not spread from or to the island, and Old Gutnish developed as an entirely separate branch from Old East and West Norse. For example, the diphthong i in egu, er and weta was not retroactively umlauted to a as in e.g. Old Icelandic eigu, er and vita. Breaking was especially active in Old Gutnish, leading to forms such as bjera and bjawa, mainland bera and bjoa. Dropping of with in initial w is shared only with Old Icelandic. Topic text example. The Gutasaga is the longest text surviving from Old Gutnish. It was written in the 13th century and dealt with the early history of the Gotlanders. This part relates to the agreement that the Gotlanders had with the Swedish king sometime before the 9th century. Topic. Relationship to other languages Topic. Relationship to English Old English and Old Norse were related languages. It is therefore not surprising that many words in Old Norse look familiar to English speakers e.g., armr arm, foder foot, land land, full r full, hanga to hang, standa to stand. This is because both English and Old Norse stem from a Proto-Germanic mother language. In addition, numerous common, everyday Old Norse words were adopted into the Old English language during the Viking Age. A few examples of Old Norse loanwords in modern English are English, Viking Age Old East Norse, in some cases even displacing their Old English cognates. Nouns, anger, a -n -g -r, bag, baggy, bait, bayet, bayeta, bayeti, band, band, bark, bork, stem bark, birth, byre, dirt, drit, dregs, dreja, egg, egg, related to oe, cognate, age, which became Middle English, i, ei, fellow, filagi, gap, gap, husband, husbandi, cake, kaka, keel, keel, stem also keel, kill, kid, key, knife, nif, law, log, stem lag, leg, leg, link, halank, loan, lan, related to oe, cognate, lane, cf, lend, race, rose, stem ross, root, rot, related to oe, cognate, wyrt, 
CF wart sale sala scrap scrap seat seti sister sister related to OE cognate sweaster skill 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 skin skin skirt skirta versus the native english shirt of the same root sky sky slaughter slater snare snara stake steak thrift rift tidings tiendi trust troust window vendoga wing v i n g verbs are er displacing oe sinned blend blanda call kala cast casta clip clipa crawl crafla cut possibly from on kuda die doya gasp gaspa get geta give gifa gefa related to oe cognate gifan glitter glitra hit hita lift lifta raise rayesa ransack ransaka rid ria run rina stem rin ran run related to oe cognate rinan Scare, skira, scrape, scrapa, seam, soma, sprint, sprinta, take, taka, thrive, rifas, thrust, rista, want, vanta. Adjectives: flat, f l a t r, happy, hap, ill, i l l r, likely, licklig, loose, louse, low, lag, meek, meek, odd, odda, rotten, rotin, rutin, scant, scamped, sly, slog, weak, vague, wrong, vrang. Adverbs: thwart, athwart, vert. Prepositions: till, till, fro, fra. Conjunction, though, though, o. Oh. Interjection, hail, heil, wassel, ves heil. Personal pronoun, they, i, their, aia, them, aim, for which the Anglo Saxons said he, hira, him. Prenominal adjectives, same, sami, in a simple sentence like, they are both weak. The extent of the Old Norse loanwords becomes quite clear, Old East Norse with archaic pronunciation, i u by yiki, while Old English, he a sinden bagan ah ways. The words they and weak are both borrowed from Old Norse, and the word both might also be a borrowing, though this is disputed. Cf. German bide. While the number of loanwords adopted from the Norse was not as numerous as that of Norman French or Latin, their depth and everyday nature make them a substantial and very important part of everyday English speech, as they are part of the very core of the modern English vocabulary. Words like bowl and thursday are more difficult when it comes to their origins bowl may be from either old english bula or old norse bully while thursday may be a borrowing or it could simply be from the old english unresdag which could have been influenced by the old norse cognate the word r is from old english erun erin which stems back to Proto-Germanic as well as the Old Norse cognates. Topic. Relationship to modern Scandinavian languages Topic. See also Germanic mutation, An introduction to Old Norse — a common textbook on the language List of English words of Old Norse origin Old Norse morphology — the grammar of the language. Old Norse orthography — the spelling of the language. Old Norse poetry. Proto-Norse language — the Scandinavian dialect of Proto-Germanic that developed into Old Norse. Topic. Dialectal information. Greenlandic Norse History of Danish History of Icelandic Old Gutnish Old Norwegian Old Swedish References Cleesby Vigfussen Sources Dictionaries Topic Grammars Topic Old Norse texts Topic Language learning resources Topic External links Heimskeringla No, an online collection of Old Norse source material Old Norse sound sample Old Norse loans in Old and Middle English, and their legacy in the dialects of England and modern Standard English 
Old Norse Basic Lexicon at the Global Lexicostatistical Database.